everybody. Welcome to the September 1973 issue of World Harvest Magazine. And that's what you're looking at right here. Now on the cover, there's a picture of an oriental worker working in the fields there. I'm not sure if that's a, a rice field or what it is. It looks flooded, whatever it is. But he says there, the harvest is dot, 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 blank. The workers are dot, dot, dot. And what that is, is that is a reference from Matthew 9, 37. And it's also in the book of Luke, I think in chapter 10. But the reference from Matthew is the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. And that's what the Lord Jesus Christ said to his disciples in speaking about the laborers for the gospel and spreading the gospel. Certainly then it was the laborers were very few. It was basically just him and his followers. But it is still that way to that day. The laborers are still few. This refers in this issue to the first article in this magazine, and it's called The Orient Report. Half the world is there. And what he means by that is the population. And it's still that way. Over half of the world's population is in the Orient. Well over half. Maybe even two-thirds, you know, if you consider the entire Orient. And this, this extensive write-up that he has here in this issue, he just speaks about all the things that are going on over there for the gospel. He talks a little bit about the youth, about the churches over there, because he had a church in Hong Kong, and I believe it's still there to this day. It was called New Life Temple, and there were several churches that he had in the Philippines, and that church that he started there in the Philippines is still there, and it's actually the largest non-denominational church in the Philippines, and Brother Sumrall's nephew David Sumrall is the pastor there to this day. But it's a fascinating article. He just talks about the work of the gospel over there and uh, about how it is with communist China there, which was there at that time also. And he speaks a little bit about the difficulty of getting the Bibles in there and things like that. This issue has all the standard things that he usually had Every month and every issue, he's got a report from the orphanages around the world that they had, particularly the one in the Luzon area of the Philippines. And then in this issue, on the page that he usually calls letters to the editor, in this issue here, it's called Share a Praise. And he has several different letters in here that were written from different places around the country. <laughs> then the highlight, I think, of this issue is in the centerfold. And it is an article called Mass Media and the End of the World by Brother Sumrall. Now, this is very interesting today, and it applies very much to today also. We have to remember that in 1973, there was no internet at all. The media then would have been newspaper, magazine, radio, and television. And that's basically it. Maybe film a little bit. But in reading this article, it was almost like he's talking about our current day. One part of it here, he says, Multitudes of people believe what they see on television, hear on radio, or read, not realizing there might be lies and propaganda behind it. So Brother Summerall was well aware of the lies and propaganda that are propagated by the mass media. Now, we've woken up a little bit more to it nowadays, and we realize the great depths of it and the government involvement in many of these things. But I just, I thought this was a very fascinating article. Um, and there's another part in the article here where he says, through the mass media, the devil can actually tear the human mind to pieces. The mass media can destroy the unity of the United States of America. It can project the negative rather than the positive. Some of the writers and photographers of the mass media are adventurous and drifters 
seeking excitement. They overstate events, they overemphasize situations, and could constitute a real menace to the well-being of a nation. <laughs> wow, this is very relevant to today. So I highly recommend this article here in the middle of the magazine, Mass Media and the End of the World. Now, the page right after that, on page 10, he has a special write-up here about his friend and mentor, Howard Carter, who he traveled the world with back in the 30s. And Brother Howard Carter had a lot to do with the doctrines and things that Brother Summerall taught, especially about the gifts and the ministries of the Holy Spirit. Brother Howard Carter was very much a trailblazer in the whole subject of the gifts and ministries of the Holy Spirit. Before he came along, there wasn't really a whole lot written about it, and there wasn't a whole lot of understanding about it. He really initiated the whole train of thought on the subject in the Pentecostal church at large, through all the sections of Pentecostalism, really, and the full gospel churches and, and whatnot. Now, Howard Carter had passed away a couple years before this. He passed away in 1971. And this article here is about his revelations that he received from the Lord. At the end of the article, Brother Sumrall is offering Howard Carter's book, Questions and Answers on Spiritual Gifts. Now, I don't have that book. I wish I did. But I went online, I looked it up, and it is available. It's available from Amazon. So I actually, I think I'm going to order a copy of that. And I'll probably order a used copy, one of the older hardback copies. There's a new paperback edition out of it. But I don't have that, and I think I'm going to order that. And when I do, I'll make a PDF of it and offer that also, because that book really laid down the groundwork for Brother Sumrall's entire teaching about the gifts and ministries of the Holy Spirit. You know, in addition to, of course, what the Apostle Paul wrote about it in 1 Corinthians. And he has an ad in here for a video cassette player again. He had it in the previous issue. Now, this was a brand new thing. People didn't have that kind of thing in their home yet. That really didn't get popular until the 80s. So that's really interesting that he was offering that back in 1973. But like I said, there's a lot of other little things in here, little ads, things about their, the tour that they were getting ready to take, and uh, an item of interest toward the back of the magazine on page 14 is the announcement of the birth of Brother Sumrall's first grandchild, okay? And that was Lester Leonard Sumrall. Yes, he was named after his grandfather, both of his grandfathers, actually, uh, because Lester was his paternal grandfather, and Leonard was his mother's father, his maternal grandfather. So he carries the names of, of both of his grandfathers. Uh, Lester, I, I know him a little bit. We're familiar with each other. I remember when he was born. We're 11 years different, so I was 11 years old when he was born. But he has a ministry of his own, and you can find him on YouTube. He's on there several different places. And he has his own ministry going right now also. But I just thought that was interesting. I remember when he was born. And at the time that he was born, his parents, Frank and Carol Summerall, they actually lived in a little house that was behind the church. Uh, the main house brother and sister Summerall's where the boys were raised was right next to the church. But then behind it, there was some wood, a wooded area back there. And there was a small bungalow back there where uh, sometimes visiting evangelists that would come to the church would stay in that house. And I remember that Frank and Carol Summerall lived in that house for a short time when Lester was a baby. Later on, that small house was tore down along with a lot of that woods back there so that they could construct the large dome sanctuary, which is there now. Anyway, it's just a historical tidbit there. And just like every week, in the description box underneath this video, 
will be a PDF link to download this entire historic edition of the September 1973 issue of World Harvest Magazine. You aren't going to be able to find this anywhere else. And these articles in here are one of a kind, especially the one in the center, Mass Media and the End of the World. That is a really good article, and I don't think he has any books, really, where he touches on the subject like this. Um, he probably does, because I, I think in all of the books he wrote, he pretty much touched on about every subject that you can think of, really. So, I hope you take advantage of the download. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time together with my friends. Lord, I pray that these resources would bless your people, would enlighten them and encourage them in their walk with you. And I give you all the glory in all of these efforts. I ask that each person listening would be blessed in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty. I will see you in a couple days. We just finished the Book of Wisdom this week. But in my next video, I'm going to be dipping back into the Book of Psalms a little bit. And I hope to see you then. I love you all. Bye-bye.